Uh, Alright. Getting the black pieces. Opponent goes e4. It is time to play the Karukan. And we're running against the Pseudo Pano. Pretty interesting stuff. Just gonna go d5 and see whether he's gonna hit me with like queen a4. Try to hold on to the pawn. But it just seems he's playing some kind of normal line. Just with d4 and... There are like many ways you can play this. I think bishop g4 is one of them as well. But I think I'm just gonna stick to like the sort of classical approach. Just e6, bishop e7, castle short. Try to fianchero on the queen side with this guy. So, uh, yeah. Let's see what opponent has to say about that. I think this is like by far the easiest way to handle the pan off. Avoiding all like the sort of complicated um, forcing and drawish main lines. So, he plays a3. I think bishop f6 is common move here. Preparing knight e7 and then b6, bishop b7. That is usually how this goes. Okay, when they take, not gonna lie, pretty tough to win this position. But maybe... This pawn could get weak. I don't know. What I know is we're very solid for sure. Just gonna do this. Bishop e3 is expected and then if I take, queen takes knight e4. That is kind of forcing a draw after takes takes. Maybe as even bishop d5. So I'm not sure I like wanna rush with that because it's not going anywhere. So I could play like sort of a preventive move. Like a bit of prophylaxis. Maybe like rook b8. With the idea that okay, we wanna take and play knight d4, and after bishop d5, b7 is not hanging, and we could potentially go knight c2. I don't know. Wait, so. My brain froze, so we do this, let's say, and then we take, take, knight d4, bishop d4, bishop d4, rook d1, or rook d1, there's bishop b2, no. So bishop d4, it goes like bishop d5, let's say. We've got like bishop b2, rook b1, queen f6. It's just like so drawish if we take on f3. It's gonna be hard to win it though, like this line is just like not one of those... Winning lines, so I think we just have to take and accept the draw. I think that's just like sort of the correct outcome of the game. Yeah, just gonna go for it. It is what it is. I just care about like being super safe, playing correct chess. There's no like need to really sway side in these kind of symmetrical positions. I would say it is maybe winnable if you like really keep pieces on and try to grind them. But I think chances are like very slim and prefer just to keep it like this. At the end of the day, we are with the black pieces and um, yeah, throwing is not the worst. Even though your opponent is like a bit lower rated, you yeah, may want to just uh, respect these things sometimes. Just queen f6. Ready to trade queens. Taking with a pawn doesn't make sense. And the bishop d5 can play rook fd8. Bishop b7, rook ab8, and we win b2. If he plays rook fd1, maybe just rook d7 and bring the other rook. I'm gaining one, one point for draw. Yeah, that's right. That That is actually... We're even making ratings, so... <laughs> We should not be concerned about this at all. Yeah, just rook d7. Guess check, we take with the rook. Protect, prepare this. 
Should be playing bishop f3, probably. Funny enough, we might be on the nicer side of this. Maybe it's like not such an instant draw. I'm still like kind of betting on a draw, but maybe if opponent makes mistakes. Could play for a win? I don't know. Probably not, because now after his last move, he just wants to trade everything down. So if we trade everything down, there's no way to win. I'll try to play it for a win though. Rook d8 and then bishop d4 maybe. I'm not like risking much and just keeping pieces on the board. If you want to draw, you can just trade both rooks and that's easy draw. Also rook d2 not really helping because he just takes and plays rook d1. But after this move maybe, I've got a bit of a more active bishop. I could try to push in the pawns. Just like maybe f5. Not sure how I want to push. I think just g6, king g7. Just trying to improve my position slowly. It should be like a draw, of course. That's like no really. I don't know, like realistic winning chances, but sometimes <laughs> miracles can happen. I'll have to watch out for. This and bishop b7. But I can play b6 when that happens. Yeah, just bring the king over. Now he's threatening to do this and win a pawn. I mean, not really win a pawn, but just sort of make it more dull. Do I want to allow it? Maybe these rook end games can be won sometimes, like... Bishop b7, rook takes, rook d4 takes, rook b3. He has rook a4, so he's like even on the nicer side of it. So that's out of the question. Just need to play b6. Still, my bishop is a little bit more active, so I could try to push my pawns on the king side. We definitely need a lot of help from my opponent in order to get any realistic chances here. But you never know. I'm not like really expecting to win. I'm just like playing on a position that we don't really have any risk. And okay, if like everything comes down to a draw, that's okay. But we're going to play it on. So now he could be looking for this. I could try to fix him. I think that's fine. Hmm. <laughs> And then just f5. Maybe I could have waited with that. I was not sure. Now just rook d6. Yeah, so he's getting the bishop to c4. I'm not sure that's like actually helping him. I think he's doing maybe an inaccuracy with bringing the bishop to c4. It like definitely makes sense. But what is he like attacking? Now it kind of gives me more uh, ideas on the king side. So maybe now g5. Taking some serious space. G5, rook e1, king f6, I'm thinking. Maybe he could go rook e1, king f6, rook h3, which I kind of blundered. Yeah, that was a little bit unnecessary. Now rook h3 could give him... A very decent counterplay. Mm.
Maybe bishop c5 could be a move, although it's not what I wanted it to be. I gave him so much unnecessary counterplay. g5 was a mistake. Should have just played king f6 there. I should have it so poorly. <laughs> no. He's still bishop c5, rook e7, king f6. Just try to play on that position. The thing is, he's got a weak pawn on f2 and I don't have a weak pawn on f7. It's kind of the name of the game here. If he checks me, maybe even king g6 could be a move. Like king f6, rook d6, rook d6, rook h7. And then I can check him followed by rook b1. And then he's got to like uh, push the pawn, give him a check, king f1, rook f2. No, that doesn't work. Yeah, no, I think king f6 is good. Maybe now rook e6 is now precise way to draw for him. Okay, that I think it's unnecessary. Rook e6 there was precise draw. Now this is getting pretty fishy for him. Time? Come on, guys. There's like one minute left. It's increment. There's plenty of time in an endgame. Like, for instance, now if he moves the rook, he's literally getting mated. And if he takes, he still has issues with like rook d2 incoming. Maybe he could play captures and king e2. Somehow seems to be holding. But I don't know, maybe just rook d4. Okay, king e2, bishop b4. Maybe just with check and king e3 f4. Bishop b4 seems to be the way to continue. Rook d4, he just moves his rook and we don't get anything. King f check, but there will be king f1. Rook f4, f3, g4, like bishop e2, actually just bishop d5, so that's not how to win. I'm just thinking this, it's like super slow, but maybe hope for something. Okay, now I'm actually getting close to time travel with 30 seconds. <laughs> Maybe g3 now could be a nice defensive idea for him just to stop uh, rook d2, king e3 and there's no f4, but then rook b2 and bishop c5 comes. So I think we've got like a little bit of something. I hate increment chess because it's th you think it's easy flag and then he gets time added, then you lose. <laughs> well, increment is definitely helpful for the better player. If you're just somebody that's highly relying on flagging, well, you're probably not that good at chess. <laughs> Which is sometimes the sad truth. But, uh, okay, I think now G4, by the way. What is this? G4, King, G3? This looks super suspicious for him. Yeah, there should be something. Okay, so this with bishop d6 and g3. Yeah, this wins. Watch this. Threatening this and also just check followed by uh, g3. So I think we've got him. That looks like a win now. I would be like super happy if we can win this, but maybe not so simple yet. Maybe not so simple. Okay, missed that there is rook c4, easy win. 
No, he's losing a piece because this is uh, undefended. My gosh, this is so nice. Wait, I had mate in one. I missed mate in one. What? <laughs> I had mate in one. No, I had mate. So bad. I should quit this game. No. That was a mate. <laughs> That one was a little checkmate, indeed. Bit of shame for like not finding it, but still pretty happy about this win overall. Should be an easy win. Just bishop d6 now even nicer. Take and then we win h2. Extra bishop, easy conversion. Even a patser like me saw that mate. <laughs> no, it was like a mate for sure, but I was just like so focused on like really, you know, taking on C4, getting the easy win. I like forgot about it. Okay, so we can just give him everything because we can sacrifice the bishop for his pawn. Just to be annoying, I could play bishop d3 and stop that pawn, but it's like. You just sacrifice the <laughs> bishop for it while it's approaching g7. Just don't forget about it. <laughs> just uh, go pawn. Okay, now you'll see the perks of having an extra bishop. He's not pushing. Why is he not trying to push? Give me Quinn. All right, he resigns. Oh my God, I'm actually like so happy for winning that position. This feels good, man. Like, <laughs> if you boys remember where we started, <laughs> we had this position. Like, I wouldn't really expect many wins from that position, but it definitely feels very nice when we get them. And especially, you know, we had nothing to risk, really. I, uh, yeah, avoided his threats. I think this maneuver... Already got him a bit in trouble. I don't know, just maybe try to play g3, h4 and keep the bishop on f3. I don't find the bishop. So, um, yeah, like helpful on that diagonal. But g5 was a bit rushed. Here, like king f6 is a bit better in my opinion. We can even hop into like the analysis tab. Okay, so apparently I'm just better if I play knight a5. Yeah, I just expected this to be zeros everywhere. So apparently it's full of zeros everywhere. Now, if he wanted the precise draw, I said earlier that rook e6 was the way to make it. Because now I can no longer infiltrate. This would have been a nice way for him to force the draw. But you know, your opponents are generally not going to find this. And especially I wouldn't have played rook f7 if I was him. I calculated this variation where I thought, okay, maybe we have rook d1 check followed by uh, rook b1. And I saw f3, rook b2 and felt promising. Because we're winning back the pawn, his structure is kind of weak. I saw this position in my head and felt like okay, after king h1 we should have a little bit of something, but maybe not that much really. But definitely we're not risking anything and we're applying pressure. So um, after king e2, I think really here we've got him like rook d4, best move. And if he like moves the rook here, check. King h4 g3 is important and the pawn runs. But apparently f4 would be a better defense. But it's still like extra pawn. Definitely winnable. Hey guys, happy about this win. <laughs> Hope you liked it. Okay, getting the black pieces.
Time to play with Karul Khan. We haven't got a chance to actually play too many in the 1800s. Where's the enough? Everybody play D4. But looks like we're facing the classical variation and uh, we're going to be trying out the Tartakovar. Like he's taking and expecting a lot of these players to go knight f3, which is the most natural move by far. But okay, opponent, man of culture, plays c3, maybe bishop d3 next. If he plays knight f3, it's just like nothing special. But like opponent has studied the modern opening theory. Interesting. Can see too. How the theory goes. Let me have a look on his profile. No information so far. He's gonna activate the rook. Is he gonna play queen c2 or not? I think I'm just gonna play h6 actually. Everybody's been playing this position with uh, h5, but I think h6 is good enough. Even against like the, the lines with long castle and obviously even easier to play when the castle short. Let's see. We just shot castle. 97, 98. Get in like normal kind of game. Bishop f4. Wonder if there's any rookie two, queen e2, bishop f4. Like rookie one, knight f8. No, I think we have rookie two now and we're winning. No, rookie two doesn't work because of uh, queen e4. I always forget it. We have to move the bishop and then there's queen h7 coming. So that doesn't quite work. There's knight f8. Got ourselves a position. Preparing this. If 94 just queen d8. Protecting f5, preparing this push. Then 96 in a lot of lines. Hitting the pawn, I think can just counter attack. Let's see what he has in mind with the knight. After he moves the knight, we can either play king g7 or consider queen g5. But I think king g7 is easy enough. It's protecting. Expecting rook f1 and then I think bishop e6 is the move, although knight e6 could also be played. I think just bishop e6 is fine though, just continuing developing. So I think plan would be something like this, maybe queen h4 in some lines. He does that, just the same. Just to be careful about this pawn. Plays b3. Now, queen g5 kind of invites f4. Maybe that's something I want to see. Could go to h4 afterwards. Play rook a d8. Okay, let's give it a try. Clearly, I'm very happy if he takes. Might start attacking him on the h5. He's gonna do this. She's weakening e4. Is there any chance I can just play queen f6? That might be the move, in fact. Um, I can just do this and maybe push the pawn. Get rid of his knight. Give rook e5, just knight e7.
It is definitely a pretty complicated game when they have this short castle positions. Especially in like the 92 line when he started with a precise C3, but... I think this one looks rather safe for us. Not sure I want to do that yet. Bring the rook first, I guess. Threatening h5, h4. Yeah, I think we just expand, why not? Mm. It's gonna play knight f1 and we just like... I think we're happy about taking this space. Position is pretty solid, hard for white to like make any progress. I'm not saying we're gonna make much progress, but... Our goal is to be like solid and it's up to Y to create complications. I think maybe next think about doubling up on the D file. Maybe we could be thinking of like C5 ideas now that his bishop is kind of soft on D3. I don't see like C5 working immediately. It's definitely if we double up. Wait, I was actually keeping this idea in mind, but I think I miscalculated. Hey, thank you for the five gifters, Jonathan. <laughs> the timing right after the potential blunder. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you for the support. All the time, crazy support for the channel. Appreciate it, man. You're being really nice. Okay, can we actually save this with h4? Bishop e6, hg. I think we have to go for that. I don't see anything else working. Pick up this. Bishop h3 is just up a pawn, no? Not nice. <laughs> but I mean, maybe we've got like some C5 kind of play. That's more of like a weird square for the bishop, to be honest. Um... See, let me take. You don't think bishop takes on f5 is an 800 type of move? Yeah, so to be honest, he's been playing really <laughs> well so far. I'm not like suspecting him of anything yet, just because I think we're still having decent chances. But we'll see. Bishop f5 is definitely a great move there. There's no question about that. But we'll see, like, we'll just try to get this into, like, a time scramble and see if he can give up. If he can, maybe he's a human, maybe not. <laughs> There's no way to, like, know for sure. Trying to get d596 in. If 96 immediately would have taken with a bishop. Killing the pawn. Expecting g3 move. Plays it quite quickly. Maybe queen f5, trying to check him. So we're getting some chances of an attack. It's not like much, but it's definitely something. So we can go there. Knight c7 b5. 
It's someone who just wants to push d6, just like that. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, so I think these force rook g2 and then just knight c7, d6, knight e8, win the pawn. I think that's the play. Running b5. To me, it looks like we're having a reasonable position. Of course, <laughs> there might be something that I'm missing, which is maybe this move. I think we can take though, and it's like all right. Looks all righty to me. Yes, check there's knight f6, so he probably takes. They may be taken, we win. Oh no, there's queen e5, never mind. That doesn't work. Just knight f6 has to be played otherwise. Have to block with the knight. This is big threat. Yeah, I think to me this doesn't look like a suspicious opponent. I think we're definitely back at it. Maybe I don't get it. Maybe he has g4 and he wins. But that's not working, I think. <laughs> definitely played very well though, in like the first part at least. Now we're getting something. Looks like. Queen e2 after tanking, interesting stuff. I mean, why not knight g4? If we could play this, we just crash. <laughs> Looks like an eternal pin. Yeah, it looked like that, but <laughs> not anymore. Watch some of your videos on YouTube and I like them. Thank you for that, Astro. I appreciate you coming on Twitch all the way from YouTube. By the way, guys, you that are just watching on YouTube, you should that do that too, but see how nice it is. You just come in the chat, say hi, and you get recognized. You're not sure what, what the hell opponent did. Like, he just played like a god in first 15 moves, and then he just like <laughs> couldn't keep up. That's super strange. YouTube, I'll follow. Yes, you should. You, the real stuff happens on YouTube. Okay, so I was getting absolutely destroyed, and then it just got owned. Okay, I think I play like opening quite of quite decently. It's just that I blundered at some point. Now, queen f6 was, if I play queen d8 and then, yeah, I, I should have done this, by the way. This is super interactive maneuver, guys. Just queen d8 and get a knight uh, this way. Black is doing quite well. Can I check g4? For sure it was not good. Not uh, good there. Yeah, I should have. I had equal position. But then I blundered and then, like, I told you bishop h3 is just very safe for him. Like, bishop c4, like, super weird. Just like getting counterplay after that. Oh, he had d6. King g1 blunder. Queen h3 blunder. Wow. Add b5 is a strong move. But uh, what do you expect from me? Yeah, no, g4 is clearly lost, I think. <laughs> oh, rook e8. Not sure I would have found, but it looked bad. Pretty strange game, again, not gonna lie. What is a good opening to learn for uh, black after white starts d4? Just play the Slav, do the reverse London that I recommend on YouTube. It's like really the easiest and very good. You can play it against anything, not only d4. If they do b3, reti or English or whatever, you can just do that against anything. 